This is 9.4, covalent bonding and orbital overlap. So we've looked at Lewis structures, and we kind of know where atoms are and what's attached to what. We then looked at VSEPR theory to have some idea of the shape and location of electrons in a molecule. But that still does not answer the question of why you end up with a bond. Why do you have two atoms that actually connect and make a bond? And so we're going to go back to quantum mechanics. And if you remember quantum mechanics ideas that there were orbitals. And the orbitals was the, the room for the two college girls that hate each other. Um, and that region in space where two electrons will reside. If you can go back to that theory and have this idea of an orbital and overlap two orbitals, one from one atom and one from another, so that one of these girls that's staying away from the other girl, okay, can overlap with another, another atom. So it's essentially like two rooms in two different universes at the same time. And there's a portal where one girl can go back and forth between rooms. It's essentially what we're talking about. And it's that crazy, actually. Because this idea of electrons overlapping and sharing regions in space is pretty close to that weird. So you have this idea that you have an overlap between two college dorm rooms where the, uh, where the one girl that's avoiding the other girl can essentially have two sets of roommates at the same time in two universes. It's bizarre any case, that's what you've got here. So if you were to have an orbital that could overlap with another orbital, and now you have a region in space where two different nuclei are pulling on the same sets of electrons, then you are sharing those electrons, then that's what a bond is. So we think of covalent bond as a sharing of electrons by adjacent atoms whenever the orbitals of those atoms overlap. This is called valence bond theory. So the valence bond, bond theory states that the covalent bond forms when the orbitals of the two atoms overlap and there's a shared region of space between the orbitals um, and that's called the orbital overlap and that the two electrons, usually one from each atom of opposite spin, overlap in this space. And so as the, as as you have them together, that's what a bond is. So a bond is the shared region in space between these two orbit orbitals where you have um, one electron of one spin, say we'll do it an up arrow, and another electron of an opposite spin, a down arrow, and they're both sharing this region in space on that side. Now, this region in space between these two um, different orbitals that are coming together is the bond. And so the bond is being, the electrons in that bond are being held in place by the two nucleus that are pulling on both of them. So both sets of nuclei are pulling on both sets of electrons. That's why that we had in, in covalent bonding this idea that the two electrons in the bond can count for both atoms. Both atoms can count the pair as belonging to them because they're both being pulled on it. Well, if you have it too far away, so if you were to have something like this where it's too far away, you're not going to get a lot of pull because the nucleus is not close enough to those electrons to pull them to themselves. Also, if you were to have them too close together, okay, too close together and have it like a very huge overlap, then what's happening is that the nucleus, which is at the center of that, is pushing against the other nucleus. The nuclei are too close together. So you've got positives pushing on positives, and so it can't be too close together, and it can't be too far away from each other. The too far away means that you don't have enough attraction between the nucleus and the electrons in the bond. So Energy-wise, okay, energy-wise, you're going to have a certain potential energy that's at a low point. Whatever that low point is, is what where the, the actual 
bond length will be. The two uh, atoms are far enough away so that they're still in attraction, but but far enough away that the that the nucleus don't uh, repel each other. So it's it's kind of a tug of war between those two things. And when you have the lowest point in energy between those two opposing forces, that is your bond length. And then whatever that length happens to be, that's the distance that those two atoms are apart from each other in a bond. So remember, double bonds and triple bonds and single bonds are all different sizes. Uh, carbon hydrogen is different than chlorine hydrogen bonds because you've got different amounts of pull based upon the different amounts of positive and negative charges. And so the distances are all slightly different. The distances you see are the distances based upon the lowest possible energy that you end up with after you have nuclei uh, pushing and pulling each other and the electrons being pulled by the nucleus.